2013, the Cape Peninsula University of Technology made history with the launch of ZarCube 1. Now the institution has done it again with ZarCube 2, launched this morning with the Russian Soyuz Canopus mission from Siberia. The satellite, developed by the French South African Institute at CPUT, will monitor marine traffic along the South African coast and also detect forests and felt fires. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined on the line by Deputy Director General for Technology Innovation, Mbomneni Mufe. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Uh, let me start by saying congratulations uh, on this launch. How significant is it? Uh, thanks a lot, Peter. And let me just say to the team that was very central in developing this, uh, well done. This is quite a significant milestone for South Africa. Uh, firstly, because we are really slowly and steadily um, stamping our authority in the area of space science and technology globally. And I think this just symbolizes that we have made serious strides in that direction. So this Cube satellite is just a demonstration of what we can actually do as a country. All right, so the ordinary man in the street might be saying, that sounds great, but how does it change my life? Well, it changed people's lives in different ways. One of them is that this is going to be part of the constellation that we are developing to monitor our oceans. So we do know that we've got uh, 4,000 kilometers coastline, and inside that we got our ocean uh, in terms of uh, the resources like fish, Etc. And this this needs to be monitored. We we often hear of people that are plundering our oceans, the piracy where people uh, steal our fish and sell it abroad. So that uh, indicates a loss that we have on our economy. So when we protect those using the data information that we'll be getting from these satellites, it means that we are again ensuring that our economy grows. And and that the oceans contribute as they are expected to the growth of our economy. So that is quite crucial, therefore, for everyday life. Secondly, this tube satellite goes into space with one of the uh, high-tech cameras that is going to be used in fire detections. Now, fires are very dangerous in terms of devastating properties, and that has, again, an impact on the economy. So the detection of fires and their prevention is actually, therefore, very crucial in making sure that um, as a country, we have uh, made sure that people's lives and their property can actually be protected. We probably can only refer to just a few weeks back where in California the fires actually caused so much havoc, both in terms of people's lives and also in the economy. All right. So now this is a project uh, uh, in, in collaboration with a number of partners. Tell us about this partnership and uh, why it was important to bring so many people together. So basically, I think it's important to clarify that this is a South African project. We're leading the project, we're investing in the project, and we are developing our own local capacity in, uh, in this project as well. We do partner, for example, you might have indicated in the beginning that this is coming from the uh, FSAT Institute at uh, Cape Peninsula University of Technology. That is a partnership between South Africa and the French government. So those partnerships are quite crucial because Today, when you want to develop capacity, you are going to need to partner with those that can help you grow. And in this instance, I need to really applaud this partnership because it's been going on for a number of years, not only in the area of space sciences, but also in the area of uh, electrical engineering and electronics. So in this particular instance, these have come in handy in making sure that we build on the um, capacity that we initiated when we had some Bandera satellite to make sure that South Africa is really at the forefront of the development of uh, tube satellites globally. This must be encouraging for us uh, in terms of uh, skills, knowledge and uh, developing this kind of uh, uh, knowledge uh, going forward. It, it is very exciting and, and especially because if you really get to understand that even the companies that are involved, we're looking at, for example, two local companies, women-owned, black-owned companies like Astrofica, companies like Livone. These companies have been involved, for example, in uh, assisting with a, a, a integration, a testing and assembly, and also on the ground stations. So it shows that this is also about 
building a South African space industry, which is quite crucial if we want to really play in the fourth industrial revolution. These are the areas where the country must start investing in because space science, if we really face reality, is what is actually ruling our lives today. All right, and perhaps finally, how excited is the minister about today's launch? Uh, that if, her, if her cell phone is still working, she's very excited. I know that there was so much traffic into her phone. So I, I must say that she's quite excited. And, and she's really injected so much energy into this program. And as I'm talking to you now, we have um, availed additional resources for us to have additional satellites. Because what we need is more than just one satellite. We need about nine of them to make sure that we have good coverage in terms of the visiting times because this satellite is going to be um, orbiting uh, quite often. But when there are more, you actually can get 24-7 coverage. So that's what we're looking forward to. And that's what the minister has actually um, uh, led us into investing more to make sure that this program really lead us to have the impact that we want space science to have. All right, that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you very, very much indeed. And uh, congratulations on this exciting venture. And we look forward to more in the future. Thanks so much for joining us on the program. Thank you, Peter. All right, okay. So